so good, good morning. Um, maybe very quick, we were with a very small group, so it's nice uh, to just uh, maybe introduce ourselves. I'm, uh, I'll introduce myself during this presentation, but um, um, I can see uh, Michael, um, Marie-Louise, Rosanne, could one of you say who you are and, uh, and, and why you're in this meeting? Shall okay. I start? Okay, Perfect. sorry. That was Rosanne or Marie-Louise who... <laughs> yes, hello, I'm Rosanne. Yeah, and I work for myself as a singer, and uh, I also uh, match. I'm a matchmaker in entertainment and events. And for me, in this time, it is uh, uh, also a little bit um, online meetings and online concerts. And I'm just curious, uh, yeah, what I can learn uh, from you guys uh, in this uh, period. Cool, great, Michael. Yeah, hi, I'm Michael. I'm calling from Austria. And uh, I got to know network tables um, um, during my research for uh, the different tools. Um, we were looking for a broad um, toolbox for the virtual events. We are, I'm the CEO for an Austrian event company, and uh, I was in contact with uh, Harry of uh, network tables already. And... Um, yeah, I'm interested in using your tools now myself, not during yeah. a presentation or not during a demo, but like it would be within a, in a, a real situation. Okay. Great. And uh, Marie-Louise? Uh, hi, I'm Marie-Louise. I'm from uh, the Congress Bureau from uh, Erasmus MC. And uh, well, we are uh, um, uh, learning how to do online uh, meetings because all the other meetings are cancelled or have been postponed. Yeah. So this is also for me uh, a learning period to uh, find out uh, all kind of things. Great. Nice, uh, nice to meet all of you. And um, Kelly, I see you're in. Hi, good morning. I'm together with one of my colleagues, Daniela. She is the project manager and I'm in the role of project coordinator and we work for Rotterdam Port Promotion Council. Um, and we are curious to hear more about interaction during online meetings. Yeah. Great. Well, thanks. Would it, uh, would it be possible to see everybody or is it just... Yeah, it might, for me it would be great, but I'm... I, you guys can see me, is that right? Yeah. And I did like say you guys could also um, talk, but I disable talking chat, promote panelists, remote. I think it's, well, as far as I can see in my function as administrator, I can, uh, let's see, play sound, look, mute everybody. I think this is set up as a webinar and Zoom doesn't allow to, to show the, the, the audience yeah. while the webinar is running. Thank you, Michael. So that's so that's so you guys can only see me. I'm yeah. sorry for that. <laughs> yeah, because I had other meetings in, in this uh, uh, platform and there we could see each other. Yeah, yeah when but it's set up as a meeting, then it's yeah. a meeting and then you have This is a workshop. And the workshop is and, and uh, up to 50 participants. And uh, I think that's the, the difference. If it's uh, up to yeah, 50 participants, it's not possible. Yeah, the, the other ones were, were workshops as well, but okay. I don't know. I don't... Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I would be, it would be very nice, but I just can't find the right button. So no, then... well, maybe we can uh, search each other on LinkedIn. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we can uh, see pictures, or uh, I see I haven't any uh, profile picture, and Michael has, so we can see Michael if he if he's talking uh, in a picture. But uh, yeah. we aren't Marie Louise and Kelly. We don't have a picture. I see. Okay, uh, so, um, sorry for that. Um, now. I'm um, Mike. Uh, uh, yeah, just interrupt whenever you want to interrupt in this uh, presentation or uh, like workshop kind of setting. 
Um, I uh, once started with the company Sensteps, and um, we're with a team of 10 people right now uh, making audience engagement or creating audience engagement during presentations. And I'd like to show you just five best practices on how it was used. And I thought it might be interested for uh, people in the event industry. And um, who knows, you get inspired in a way. Um, so online with groups, how do you do that? Uh, just what I said, five very challenges with your audience engagement. There's quite some challenges. And I also have some suggestions on how to do it. And I think uh, Sensex was always uh, used also during just offline meetings. Um, and then if you were with a group of 1,000, it is also nicer with 500 to, to, to engage them. But especially during online meetings, it's very difficult to really know what your audience is thinking. Uh, imagine us now, you already asked me, uh, please open up this video because then I, we can at least see each other a little. And even and it's even more difficult now that we don't see each other, and uh, and we have to be in contact in a way with each other. So with online, it's it's way more difficult than offline. Um, but there is a way to at least get in touch and get in contact with each other. And uh, I'll show you. Um, before uh, we start, I'd like to ask you to go to sensitive.me. So take your phone, go to sensitive.me, and log in with meeting. Or what you can do is open up your camera on your phone and scan the QR code. If you scan the QR code, uh, you're in the meeting straight away. And it asks you to open Safari or whatever browser you're using. And then uh, we're also going to play a small quiz. So that's uh, for this quiz. I'm asking you uh, to write down your name. And if you do that, I see your name appearing. So now on the right bottom, you see we have five participants. Uh, Mike is in, Michael, Kelly, um, six participants in, Daniel, Daniela, ML, and Roseanne. Well, that's the amount of participants we also have in this meeting. Uh, so I'll go on uh, to my next slide. And um, just as a question for all of you, the one word open, um, how do I feel today? And this is a way you could also open your just event if it's with 10 people or 200 people uh, how do you feel um, are you happy are you sad anxious and um, once that's uh, in we slowly see a word cloud appearing and uh, smileys can also be there All right, so we're happy, we're great. It's a little bit strange maybe. And uh, especially with how big the group is, how nice it is, uh, the, the, the word club which you see appearing. Happy is now a bit bigger, more people are saying happy. And uh, thumbs up. So let's go to the next slide and see uh, what's going on. So, um, we had a best practice of um, a Jubilee, uh, which was playing a quiz with 10 questions for its employees. A ranking was visible during the quiz at the end. Uh, you also saw a winner. And the uh, winner um, was, is chosen by time and the number of correct answers. Uh, and uh, with the online meeting, it's, uh, it's also great to just have, give the winner a, a prize. So uh, show them the prize, uh, what you have. For, for instance, I don't know, a small iPad that was in this case, it was an iPad, it was shown and the people could win this iPad and uh, depending on uh, the, the 10 questions which followed. Um, now I'm also going to ask you a few questions. Um, as you can see, there's a timer on the bottom, right bottom. Uh, so make sure to be on time. And uh, you can answer um, the question displaying on the screen. Um, and as you can see, six answers came in. Wuhan was the right answer. And all of you except one had it correct. And um, 
Then if we go to the next slide, we see that Daniela, she was really quick. So only it was, uh, only took six seconds and uh, 475 points uh, and on the first place of the leaderboard. But we're not there yet because this is the second question. When was the first case of COVID-19 effect? So be quick. And once it's ever all votes are in, go to the next slide and see. Oh, look. More of you thought end of November, it was the begin, beginning of December, middle to mid-December, and the first uh, COVID-19 was detected in Wuhan. Um, Michael is the runner-up, just before Daniela. And now this is my last and third question. How many COVID-19 deaths does the US have so far? One more. Just on time, six answers came in. Ooh, and nobody had the correct answer. The correct answer was 114,000. And um, this was like a, a small example how you can play a quiz. Uh, now it's calculating the scores. And it shows you the podium and the winner is... Michael with <laughs> 937 points. Congratulations. So um, this is a great way of, 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 of playing a quiz um, together. And of course, now we're with a very small group, um, but it's very, it can be very engaging. And especially if you're there with all your employees and asking certain questions about your company, for instance, and see who is really into all that knowledge of the company. Um, um, and that's one of the best practices I'd like to show. Um, a second best practice is how can the audience look at themselves? A professor presents finding about a research he did. So he had a research and uh, he wants to present that to a certain audience. And um, be, what he can do is just present it, tell them what his research was about and what his findings were. But he tested these findings within the audience uh, so uh, looking if the audience said the same as uh, his findings were. And um, this was a great way to create the like-mindedness. So instead of presenting everything, you can also just mm -hmm. ask your audience, um, what do you think about this certain subject? People answer it. And then you say, okay, my research says X. Um, this is the same thing as you guys are saying, or it's a different thing as you guys are saying. But that's a way to at least engage them and to, to, to let them think about this certain subject in, instead of just telling them uh, the story you want to tell them. Um, just like a question like this. So this is not a vote. There's no timer. Uh, this is not a quiz question. There's no timer in it. But it's possible to just answer it. And... Um, um, then your audience can, can, you can as a speaker reflect on it and then uh, see what they, what they think. So we can all vote on this question. And one vote came in. Another great thing <laughs> of, of uh, um, working the way we work right now is um, that you're sure in a way that your audience is participating. And that's more difficult during online meetings. You're not 100% sure, are they really listening to me if I'm just talking here or uh, how many percent did I already lose during my uh, presentation? And this is uh, just a great way of uh, not losing anybody and, uh, that they, and, and be sure that they're, that they're still with you in the story. And if that's not the case, um, then you can at least ask them, oh, I see uh, only 10% is voting uh, on this third question and the first question had more votes, so please uh, join and, uh, and then everybody starts joining again. Um, then Damien, welcome Damien. Uh, I just unmuted you or you unmuted yourself and um, um, I saw you just came in. Um, Damien, for you, you can go to sendsteps.me and you can log in with meeting sendsteps.me and login with meeting. Um, so this is just a way of, okay, I'm going to tell a story as a speaker about events. 
and I'm going to talk about the amount of uh, events we did last year. I can say that, or I can just ask the audience, what do you guys, what do you guys think? And then uh, I can tell them, okay, my research says this and blah, 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 blah. Uh, this is what I want to tell you about it. But then you, you, you take your audience with you into the, your story you're asking. <clears throat> a third best practice. How do I engage my audience during a table conversation? And um, this is also done online and offline. Um, people uh, behind the table, I don't know, maybe two, maybe three, but they're discussing a certain subject. And you can look at these uh, uh, table uh, events online, but also offline. And then, yeah, you, you just listen to them speaking about this certain subject or can you participate? And I think that's an important thing because then once you participate in this whole discussion, um, you're part of it and uh, uh, you're one group instead of just being passive listeners. Um, so the host has a conversation with one or more people. The conversation is built up out of three statements a lot of times. You know already uh, as a host, or the three people know how, uh, that they are, uh, what they are going to talk about. So make sure uh, uh, to uh, maybe ask those three statements, which your, your, your speakers already know that you're gonna talk about, but also ask your audience these statements. And then the guest speaker reacts on the audience opinion, and the audience can also send in messages, which the host or the sidekicks uh, can see. So then you first ask the question before starting the conversation with, uh, at the table. Your audience reacts on it, via this vote and then you can say okay this is what uh, the audience thinks what do you think uh, Damien and who's on the table and then he starts talking about what he thinks um, and besides that your audience then is able to just send in questions comments and there is a sidekick or a host he can see all those questions coming in and he can put them live on screen so now what I did, I um, automatically accept all messages which you guys send in. So for instance, why do you think audience engage engagement is important? Um, you can see that question is open right now on your phone. You can send it in and it will come in automatically. Um, the other possibility is to filter it. So you can see everything coming in and you can uh, decide which question or comment you want to put on screen so your audience can also see that. Um, so for now, I don't see any uh, comments coming in. There's one right there. Makes uh, the event more exciting. Yeah, I agree with you, it does. A, more, a, a bit more, less passive. Uh, you can remember the event even better. Yeah. And you can keep the audience uh, interested. Good one. Yeah. <clears throat> that is indeed the case. And, um, uh, and remember the event even better. And that's also a thing you want uh, people to, that they exactly like turn off their computer and then they go away and you at least want them to be sparked in a way and this can really help and it's also very entertaining uh, um, to, to, to do this okay great thanks a fourth best practice how do i use the knowledge within my audience an example uh, of a a food inspiration event, an entrepreneur, he, be, he presented a certain business model um, and he had a challenges which he talked about. And he asked for his audience to send in suggestions and ask them to upvote those suggestions if the audience liked it or not. The entrepreneur, he uh, then reflects on some of these ideas and he goes home with valuable ideas and information. So this is a way again for, there's a, I don't know, 100, room, 100 people in the room, maybe a hybrid event, 50 people in the room, uh, 100 online. 
um, let them send in suggestions. People can see all those suggestions. So right now, you also see there's a there's a question open. Um, questions for Mike. Um, this is uh, something you can send in, and then you can see all those um, comments of you coming in, and um, you can upvote everything somebody else is saying. Exactly. So. It's just, and this is just a test for each other to see, but somebody send in, how are you? And as you can see on the response website, um, you can like this. So I'm also going to send in, for instance, test. And you can see that uh, how are you is now liked twice because others like it. And I send in test, which is liked also twice. and. Blah blah. So now we're with a small, very small group again. So it's 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 a bit less important. But if you do a brainstorm, even with seven people, just let them send in, and 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 then this is a great way of um, of 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 seeing what the others think. And then sometimes you th you might think hmm, that's a good idea. I like it, and I uh, just uh, give it a give it a press the love button. And for a speaker, it's a great way to see what is most important or most valuable to him um, or to his audience. And uh, this is also with questions. <laughs> uh, people can then just send everything in, and they can they can they can ex like it or not. And uh, now there's one send in. Uh, will you accept my apologies for being late and not being muted? And uh, then this is liked by uh, certain people, and uh, it goes up in the list. Uh, the speaker can also see this list, and then he can reflect on what he sees is coming. What he sees is coming in. One last. Uh, Best practice, how to determine your agenda. Agenda. This was an event once did with a meeting with the HR professionals. Um, several votes uh, during the meeting and before the breakout. Uh, before the break, everybody is asked one question. Uh, and this question was a pretty cool one. Uh, what, are you, what are you proud of you uh, achieved this year? People send this in. Uh, again, again, a company meeting with employees. So. Uh, people could see each other's um, um, uh, like suggestion, what they really liked or what they were proud of, and it was appeared on, on screen. And this is uh, yeah, this gives a special feeling uh, for everybody to see each other's point, which they're proud of. And then um, they were uh, off. Um, it was a small break of I think five or ten minutes. Uh, people could still see all these proud messages appearing on screen. So if you already uh, took your coffee, grab your coffee, we're back behind your screen, you could still see those proud messages coming in. Um, besides that, also they asked uh, survey questions um, before the break. And um, because of those survey questions, they, they all replied on it. You could see the replies coming in. The audience couldn't see it, but the organizers could. And, and and those replies, they made, they formulated new question based on those replies. Uh, and then after the break, they asked these questions to their audience again. So this is a great way of feeling engaged because the opinion really matters. People say, uh, reply to certain survey questions, you uh, um, look at, at their replies and you formulate new questions in order to go deeper into certain subjects which um, your audience privileged to do because they were the ones sending in those replies in the survey. So for example, um, you also see on your response website, you see this survey button on the right top. Um, if you click on the survey button, um, you see uh, two simple surveys, questions, which I just asked you. But of course, you can ask anything you like to your audience here. It can be open, it can be checkbox questions, multiple choice questions, it doesn't really matter. 
Um, of course, this is a bit of promotion and marketing from my side. I ask you if, uh, if you'd like Sensips, yes or no, and uh, uh, contact details if you'd like to leave them behind. It's all not necessary. It's just also to give you an idea on how it can work for you as an organizer or as a presenter yourself. Um, you as an audience can't see the results coming in for this survey, but I as an organizer have all the results coming in and then have a look at it, uh, what you are saying. And uh, I have maybe some new leads or uh, suggestions for the next step in my presentation. So very quick, um, just a bit more summarizing and that those were my first five best practices. And then we have a, still some minutes left to talk to each other regarding this. Um, my suggestions from my side for audience engagements, make sure to receive, uh, to reserve time for, the, for your audience engagement. A lot of times the speaker thinks it's really important what he's saying. So if you tell him you get 15 minutes, he uses 20 minutes and there's no uh, room for audience engagement. So make sure to reserve time for that. Decide if you want an internal or an external host. Uh, um, if you want an internal host and you're asking um, questions uh, which people might in, feel insecure about to answer because your boss is on, on stage and you're not totally sure if you want him to see that answer so you don't um, dare to reply, then it's better to use an external host who's not your boss, who you're more open to. So those are decisions you need to make. Uh, make sure all speakers, uh, especially online, engage the audience. Very important. Um, formulate clear and teasing questions. Take your time to instruct your audience on how to participate. Um, just like I did in the beginning, go to census with me, log in with meeting or scan the QR code and make sure to wait until you see this audience counter go up. Um, have a story ready to, to, to and prepare to talk a while before everybody came in or just be quiet. And that's also not a very big issue to be quiet. Sometimes we think it's an issue to be quiet on stage, but it's not. Tell your audience what you're going to do with unanswered questions, because sometimes you get a lot of questions coming in and um, you might not be able to answer all of those questions. But what are you going to do with those questions? And are you going to publish them online on the internet somewhere and give answers there? If that's the case, let your audience know that you'll do that because then everybody feels heard because uh, everything you send in will be answered. Maybe not during this presentation or meeting, but it will be answered online on the internet and you can find your answers there. Be prepared that you might get unexpected answers, uh, especially with open-ended uh, questions. Uh, there is, uh, there is a, a possibility to get uh, a, a certain question which you don't want to answer. Well, you don't have to answer everything because there is a way of um, monitoring which questions are in. Um, but if you're open enough and you, you, you dare to as a speaker, there can be unexpected answers and uh, you can answer them straight away or just tell your audience, I'm very sorry, I have no answer to that, but um, I'll come back to that on the internet. Um, great way to engage with online and offline audience, um, especially also when it's hybrid. Uh, if there's a part on online and a part offline, you can still combine those groups together because they're all on their phone. And if you're online or offline, doesn't matter. And those group are, groups are combined together and you see a result coming in um, of the whole group and not only your people in the room, but also the people who are looking to the same presentation uh, online. And um, it is very useful, especially with big groups, uh, to use a sidekick for incoming questions. Um, you see all the questions coming in. As a speaker, uh, you're busy with your presentation or telling your whole story. So it's really nice and useful uh, to have somebody next to you uh, re reading all those questions and sometimes maybe interrupting you as a speaker. Hey, Mike, I just got this question coming in. Can you maybe elaborate on that or uh, uh, give an answer to that? Uh, um, this makes it very dynamic again because otherwise the speaker is just telling his story and uh, talking for minutes 
uh, a minute and just uh, doesn't know if it is all clear to the audience. And this is a great way that a sidekick at least uh, knows if it's clear, yes or no. He sees everything coming in and uh, he gives it back to the speaker. Uh, yeah, this was it. Just one uh, just question which I was, I'm interested in. Um, would you guys, if you click on the respond tab again on the top, um, would you guys be interested yourself to, uh, uh, to maybe use SendSteps one day? Great. Well, yes, and maybe uh, partly yes, partly maybe, and uh, it is closed. And now I'd like to know. Well, thanks for participating, and uh, let's maybe open up the discussion a bit to see what you guys think. How do you, how you guys do it? Maybe did it already. And if this can help you or helps you to at least have a better idea or insight on uh, how to participate, uh, your audience can participate online. Michael, you raised your hand, I see. So <laughs> go on. Um, I didn't uh, know stand steps before, but what, what we are using is Slido. So what would you say is the main difference to Slido? Yeah, it's um, the biggest difference is SendSteps is fully integrated into uh, PowerPoint. Uh, so here's my mm -hmm. PowerPoint presentation, and here's SendSteps. I can add uh, any question I'd like to my presentation. So I just click through my presentation. If I want to add a question here, you can decide what type of question you want to ask. Uh, for instance, a multiple choice question. Then I uh, write down my question. Hi, uh, um, where do, or whatever. Where do you live? Amsterdam, Zurich, uh, whatever, Berlin. Mm -hmm. And I add my vote, and it's added within the same layout of my presentation. It's added in my slide deck in, in my presentation, and you just click through your presentation, and. Uh, and uh, once you're on a question, it just appears for your audience. Okay. And it's also listening to your master slide, so listening to the way it needs to. So uh, this is kind, kind of plug-in to PowerPoint? Correct. Is there a version for Keynote, Apple iOS? No, there's no version for Keynote. It's, uh, it's, it's only for PowerPoint. Okay, thank you. No. Any more questions or ideas, suggestions? Maybe things you thought of while I was presenting? Hi, Mike. Sorry, Hi, Damien. Sorry I was late and um, what have you. No, it looks very interesting indeed. Could you just remind me a couple of other benefits? I can see why it's better than, um, um, What's it called? The other one you mentioned. Sorry, the one Slido. I use. Slido, yes, yeah. But, I, I um, even didn't remember that name, though. <laughs> yes, <laughs> of course you didn't. But what, what, what are the other key benefits over using, obviously, Zoom functions? I mean, we know it's moderated, presumably, as well. We've got certain moderation tools, which are necessary. Yep. So, uh, for instance, uh, so you, you, sorry, you would like to hear more advantages uh, compared to Slido um, or other or, online or, tools? Or for example, using your, your, the Q&A and the vote up and the chat within Zoom itself. Ah, good one, yeah. Sorry, I'm, yeah. I'm sure there are there, but I'm sorry, I may have missed it at the beginning. No, no, no well, you didn't. And, and, I just want to know what they are, I'm not. Yeah, you know. uh, I think the main, the biggest difference is if, for instance, a hybrid, then it's already not possible to use this function in Zoom because there's people who's not online. And, yes. yes. Um, so then, then it's obvious. Um, yes, um, besides that, uh, you do have this function of asking questions or uh, online, and then people can see all questions coming in. Uh, sometimes you just won't, don't want everybody to see everything because then the focus is gone to those questions instead of the story which the speaker is asking. 
So uh, um, you want to have it like privately and not shown to everybody always. Sometimes you do want this, but not always. And that's difficult. There's no function for that. And I think if you look at the, 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 the voting, yeah, it's, it's a basic way of doing it. And it's not part of the presentation. Yeah. So not everybody sees it, what the result is. And this is a way more like integrated way into your presentation. Yes. Everybody sees it and is engaged in a different, it's just, yeah, it's more fancy, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Good. Okay. Mm, what type, and, and, and do you, what type of tools do you use, Damien, for, for? Well, um, at the, at the moment, what we've done, we've pivoted, re really, we sort of haven't committed to, well, we committed to convert our three congresses to online, and we postponed one of them from April to December. So we're working for October, November, and December for our three association congresses. We haven't committed to any technologies of any sort yet. Um, because we know that there's a lot of development and we're not even we, 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 we may go down the route of one conference online conference tool or we may go with uh, or we may get a combination of tools mm. we we do have a cup partner who does all the webcasting and put things together for us but of course he himself is massively busy yeah. And, and may not be able to do all the nice things he did for free for us as a partnership before. <laughs> yeah. I think he will because he, he, you know, over the years, he's got a huge amount of business from our members. But, um, you know, we need to consider what way we want to do this. And engagement is important for us. Yep. It really is important that it's good. We, we, we're definitely considering the idea of a second screen. So everyone watches on one yep. thing and then on the mobile for the for the other so so having this on a separate screen or something is still possible yeah. if, even if we don't even if we use an online conference tool of some sort so yeah um i think i think for us it's very difficult getting the speakers to put, put together polls and things like that yeah. we've always found that historically very very difficult yeah you're right um and to be honest we've got so many layers of difficulty already you know yeah. that, that, that i'm not sure what we're going to do so yeah. if you sort of mean obviously with things like you know we we already need to have chats one for every stream you know and that yeah. sort of thing and we need to have people who can discuss things and then feedback to the room but i don't think by drawing something but just after discussion feedback to the room that sort of thing yeah yeah, yeah. so i'm happy to have a conversation offline with you yeah uh, on this very much so um and, and we know that things you know we've looked at a, about 10 conference tools and they're doing developments with new functions every week or two weeks so yeah, sure. the there's whole enough world is uh, coming up yeah, yes sure, sure, yeah sure. but we've seen terrible experiences mm -hmm. so so you know and and systems that are not really working well yeah. So yeah, um, I agree. an expert yeah. like yourself it, it would be much appreciated to talk to and consider yeah. and, Thing, Let's have a chat works. offline yeah. and yeah. then see, uh, see, see, see if I can yeah. like help you in any way. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. Uh, think yeah. of some ideas which I yes. have. Yes, yeah, very okay. much. Cool. Good. Well, we'll see you around later. I'm Thanks. Some other presentations later today. And, all right. Yeah, well, uh, thank, thank you very much, so much. and um, thank you all of you. Like, is there anything, Marie Louise, Rosan, Michael? Is there anything else um, I can help you with, or do you have any other questions? I'm fine. Thank you. Okay. No, not at the moment, but I will find you if I, uh, if I need to send steps. Right. Cool. Right. Well, I was curious uh, if, it's, if it's already sold in the Netherlands. I put uh, uh, the question in the chat, uh, Mike. Um, what is sold? Like send steps in the Netherlands? Or? Uh, no, I, I, uh, um, is it already uh, working in the Netherlands? Do you have already clients in the Netherlands uh, who use this? Yeah, yeah, it's used a lot. Like, like we've got like about uh, thirty thousand votes coming in per day. Okay. And it's uh, that's worldwide. Uh, also a lot in the Netherlands. Yeah. Are you coming from the UK? No, no, no. Uh, Amsterdam. Ah, okay. Cool. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you all for being a part of this uh, workshop, and I uh, hope you enjoy your day.
Thank you very much. All the best. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.